Hey, Dave LaCallion with Head Games Motorworks. Today, we're going to port a C8 Corvette intake manifold. Check it out. Now, I know some of you guys might be disappointed because, well, we can't do a back to back. This thing is going on an East Coast supercharging car. It's their first C8 head and cam package, and, well, it's got heads and a cam. Not our heads, uh, they came from LME and they need our intake manifold porting to uh, match the cylinder head and that's what we're doing. So I'm just gonna show you how to port a plastic or resin intake manifold. And here's the intake manifold. You can see it's plastic and I already started on one. So that way I can show you how to do all of them. We'll also be doing the throttle body side. We're gonna blend all that in, make it a little bit larger. For tools, I'm gonna to be using the Head Games three quarter super spiral burr, uh, and we're gonna use a 120 grit cartridge roll, and a caliper, and a razor blade. To give you an idea why I chose the three quarter, you'll see that in a lot of my videos, I show how the radius of the three quarter is uh, pretty much how you can keep a shape. And this is why I chose this one. Um, and you're thinking, man, that thing's for aluminum, but it actually will cut plastic very, very well. Um, and as long as you are kind to it, it won't hurt the plastic. Uh, obviously you guys have to keep the grinder moving. That's a big thing. But this is, um, this is why I chose that. You can see we can keep the radius, uh, which is very important. And uh, we're gonna make the shape. Now for dimensions, we are not coming up with these on our own. I asked Alex what size the head is. He gave us some dimensions and this way I had something to go off of. Uh, I'm not just willy nilly this thing. I'm actually uh, going to a size. So first up, we're going to take our Makita GD0603 grinder with the Head Games three quarter burr and go at it. I am using a Goodson speed controller. Uh, the grinder is good for 20,000 RPM, and as you can see, um, just about all of it for the initial cut. You'll notice down there, there is uh, like a separating line that doesn't really match up. So what we're also going to do is we match that up, and that's inside of there. See if I can focus on it. Um, so we're going to blend that in and make the pour to size. Let's say we're going to go about this wide. Now this thing is not finished. I just uh, kind of roughed it out so you can get an idea and uh, we'll go from there. When you're pouring this kind of intake manifold and uh, because it's plastic, you notice that over here all on these lines, it will kind of fray and, and then you can't really see your work. So what I do is I take a razor blade and I just go on the angle and I deburr it because I just need to see my lines. I'm very particular about how my stuff, I'm very particular about how my stuff looks. It has to, um, it has to look good. It has to have straight lines. And um, I can't make straight lines if I can't see the line. And that's the, uh, that's the issue when you have all this in the way that you can't see what you're actually doing. And, uh, and that's fine. We just, it's very simple. It doesn't take long. And uh, you can take all that stuff away. And uh, then we'll measure. All right, so we're going to measure it and... I'm just not there yet. I'm not to where I need to be. And as you can see, there is not such straight lines. Now, they're not gonna be perfect. From the OEM, they're not perfect, but I wanna make them as perfect as I can. You can see here uh, where I was making the radius, 
the radius is big and then it kicks out a little bit here and it kicks out a little bit here. So I need to um, make this area right here, I need this to go away and we'll probably be the size. You also notice that when I was porting it, I did it this way and I did it this way. So I did an X pattern. The X pattern is to keep it straight. And that's what, as I said, those whole things about. You also notice that I pour all the way through. A lot of guys are going to want to just make the gasket area right here. They're going to make this to size and forget all about inside. Forgetting about the inside is leaving a lot on the table because just the entrance is really not going to do anything. You, you still want to taper here uh, from the runner and you want to uh, taper it into this, but you don't want to just make this big and nothing else big. I think that is a big no-no. So now we are to size. I measured it out and we're to size. Uh, sorry guys, I can't show you the size uh, because I, I don't know how uh, LME would feel about that, but we're actually like six thousandths under and that's perfect because we still have to sand it and we still have to grind the, um, the floor. Now I'm gonna take very little out of the floor and I'm gonna take mostly out of the roof because I know Casey over there uh, is big on raising roofs. He's not on uh, lowering the floor. Uh, so if we're going to get our dimension, I know it's going to be here. Also, the biggest thing you can worry about is during reversion. Uh, during reversion, you really kind of want to keep the mouth a little bit smaller than the head, and especially on the floor. So what I'm talking about there is that during overlap, which is when intake and exhaust valve is open at the same time, we do not want to have contamination from the exhaust into the intake. So the best way to combat that is we leave a little lip on the floor and then it doesn't go all the way up the intake manifold, it stops in the runner. almost done the runner and we have to do uh, the short turn the short turn or the floor is um, there's like a little ledge here and I'm gonna blend that into the rest of the intake manifold and bring this all down now I was wrong as you can see uh, I'm pretty close to the end of the road on the roof and to get to our size we're gonna have to really take out some meat on the floor uh, I am gonna leave a little bit but it's not gonna be it's not going to be what I thought, so that's all. All right, it's all ported and now it's ready to be sanded. For sanding, you really need some facial, uh, you need like an SN95 mask because this stuff is nasty. And uh, sand can get in your lungs and it's not a good thing. So I always suggest using some kind of facial mask. And one thing I forgot to mention is you definitely wanna wear some like long sleeve shirts or something like that when you're dealing with plastic, no matter what it's gonna get on you, but you're gonna get itchy. And it, it just sucks. So who wants to be itchy? All right, so let's sand this thing. Everything is all ported, ready for sanding. 
measured out, we are actually within four thousandths of the uh, measurements. So with it sanding, I'm sure we're going to get exactly where we need to be. And um, that's it. You see, I went all the way down to the bottom there. Uh, so we're going to start off with a 120 grit. We are going to use a 120 grit. This is, uh, I'll, I'll put a link into it in uh, the description. And we're going to do it with the air grinder. Now we're going to do it with the air grinder because it has a front exhaust. And the front exhaust is going to blow all of the bad stuff out of the way so you actually see your work. So anytime you guys are grinding and you're using uh, something that doesn't have a front exhaust, it really just kind of makes the work very messy and you can't really see as much. I just wanted you guys to see the surface finish here because you saw the burr I was using. It's a pretty burly burr. And um, what you see here is that was full speed. Now it just kind of melts it out of the way. It doesn't really big chunks or anything like a normal grinder or a normal burr will. Uh, this thing just leaves like a pretty nice finish that you can sand out with 120 grit. Tech tip for you, when you are sanding these things, I want to make sure that you don't just go back and forth. If you go back and forth, just up and down and back and forth, what you'll do is you'll create a hump in the middle and you won't be able to get it out. The best thing you can do is do an X pattern. So say if you're just doing a wall, you want to do this, then you want to turn it and do it like this. On the floor, do the same thing. You want to do X patterns. You also don't want to use the whole roll. You kind of want to stop it right here or so. You see how this is how much I was already standing on one side and I didn't use the whole roll. And if you get all the way back here, uh, the problem is that you're going to change the shape. So I roughed it in with the cartridge roll and now I'm going to go to this stick. Now this stick is something that we made. Uh, we took some prop rods, a quarter inch prop rod. You can see I made a slit in the center. Sorry, I'm trying to get it in focus. Um, so I made a slit in the center, rounded off the edges, and then I use handy roll, uh, which is this stuff here. I use handy roll, cut it into pieces. So I'm going to fold it and put it in here. Hold it, put it in here, and, uh, and then I wrap it around. And what this does is it follows the contour a little bit more easy than a cartridge roll. And it's like a flapper. So it's gonna, it, it makes a better surface finish and it also won't round things off or square things off, I should say. It won't square things off. This is what I'm talking about, the service finish. You see the rough end with the cartridge roll compared to just hitting it for a couple seconds with the flapper. It really changes the surface finish and it gets all the marks out. Look at her now, looking nicey nice. Yes. So the 120 grit is a route to go. You guys really can't do anything harsher than that. It'll just eat away the material and um, you can see, man, this thing is just killer. All the way down there. Now it's time to do the throttle body side. The throttle body side's a little rough because you have all these rough edges inside there that we can do something with. But the real problem is, if you look in there, uh, that is right there. So you don't have a lot of room. You might be able to bell mouth this out so you can make it real thin um they gave me a, a size for the throttle body and it just 
it's just really not going to work for I'd have to take out this whole material here which we can't do um, so no matter what it's going to hit but we can just lessen it and um, but yeah if you start digging in there you start digging in here you are going to make a hole I'm going to use the same burr I did before which is the head games three quarter super spiral burr and I'm still using the Makita to just grind this out Now it's ported and it's time for sanding. I'm just going to use the same roll, the handy roll like I did last time uh, with the Clico grinder to take all of the marks out. Keep in mind when you're doing these is uh, when you're making a circle, you don't want to come up here and do this part, or uh, you just want to kind of pick a spot where it would be naturally to go there and not any more than that. You see how the grinder just won't go any farther? That means you don't want to push it. So if you push it, you're going to make it out around. And you can see this thing is a complete circle. And that's why I just flipped ahead. So you bring the work to you, you don't go to the work. So you can do here and you can do here, but you can't go up here and you can't push. You start pushing, you're gonna be in trouble. All right, so now we're done the manifold. It's gonna go in the car. Time for some dyno hits. 